Hello Year 9 and welcome to your final English Literature Poetry lesson focusing on Storm on the Island by Seamus Heaney with me, Mr Smith. Today's learning question is how can I write a detailed, convincing analysis of a poem in relation to its themes? So we will be looking at the best way that you can write an answer and then you will be finally completing a written answer about this poem that you can submit to your teacher. Your vocabulary today is themes. Hopefully by now this is a very familiar word to you. Ideas that recur in a piece of literature, poetry, TV or film, such as judgment, survival, suffering, deception, heroism. These are all common themes in literature and we'll be exploring themes of this poem today. Please also think about context and connotations. The context is the Circumstances that form the setting for an event, statement or idea, and in the terms of which it can be fully understood, such as Wilfred Owen writing about World War I, which he fought in, and connotations, which are the ideas or feelings that a word or image creates for the person reading or hearing it, such as a gun, which may connote protection, danger, power, justice, lawlessness, depending on your perspective and I love to represent togetherness, heartbreak, protection, lots of different ideas attached to one word or idea. Now, when we come to write our paragraph, we need to think about what an excellent paragraph actually contains. An excellent paragraph is made up of a point, evidence, and explanation. But that isn't really detailed enough for our purposes, so we like to break it down in this way. The point is, consists of an idea and a method. Your evidence will be a quotation or a reference. And the explanation shows us the effect of the quotation, what it shows, suggests and symbolises, the terminology used within that quotation and the context that allows us to better understand the poet's intention at the time. When we talk about method and terminology, what we need to remember is that method is the big, broad idea, such as the form of the poem, the voice in which the poem is written, Whereas terminology is more precise, it might be the specific word types in a quote or the language techniques used by a poet. And we need to be able to talk about both of those in the same paragraph. The terminology usually proves the method. So if you're talking about the form of a poem, your terminology will be something about the structural features, for example. Now here I'm taking an example from our first series of lessons about remains and I'm not going to talk you through the whole thing again. Um, what you can do is pause this video and use it as a checklist, as a way of seeing how a poem is put together. What I want you to realise is that it's colour coded. So each part of the paragraph, which is listed here, shows up in the paragraph here itself. And you should notice that suggests comes up a couple of times it's the biggest part of the whole answer that's as it should be the um, idea method and quotation are done with very quickly at the start and symbolize is thrown in at the bottom you should be looking to write a paragraph of around about the same proportions as this one so if you would like to pause this and refer back to this or skip back to it then you definitely should do that now here is your assessment activity, and you have a choice of questions. A. How does Heaney represent the power of nature in Storm on the Island? B. How does Heaney explore the way humans respond to powerful forces in Storm on the Island? So that is a little bit more in-depth, and it, it requires you to look at a couple of different interpretations. C. How does Heaney explore the effects of violence and conflict through the character of the speaker in Storm on the Island? This is again more in-depth, it's more precise, it requires you to talk about more details of the poem. So the challenge might be a little bit higher coming down here, but of course you've got more to talk about, so it allows you to be more exploratory in what you write. You need to choose two of those questions to answer, and a paragraph answer for each of those questions. So in total, you're going to write two full paragraphs and each paragraph will answer one of these questions. So you get to choose which two questions and you should give yourself at least 20 minutes to do this. When that's done, of course, you'll be handing it in to your teacher. So make sure that it's of your very best quality of work. The 
finally, our plenary, which is just simply before handing in your final paragraph, check it and label each part of that paragraph. So look for your point made up of an idea and a method. Label it I and M, or idea and method. Label your quotation. Pick out where you've talked about effect. Pick out show, suggest, and symbolize. Label the terminology where you've labeled it. And also pick out where you have written about context. When you hand this into your teacher, they should be able to see just by glancing at it because of your notes where you have done I, M, Q, E, T, and C. If they can't, then you haven't fully done this task. So please make sure it is done before you hand in. With that said, we have now finished this series of lessons and we've actually finished this whole sequence of English literature. So thank you very much for all of your attention, for your hard work, and I hope that you have an excellent summer. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.